Welcome back to the Shankly Sessions, the Liverpool podcast we bring you each and every week. This is your player ratings. Brentford 3, Liverpool 3. Very disappointing day at the office for Liverpool. Most players didn't even get off the coach. Um, absolute poor performance. You've seen it. We dropped the match reaction yesterday evening with Dean and Craig. Really, really bad performance. A missed opportunity to open up the gap at the top of the league. Um, and to be honest, I suppose in the end, wasteful in front of goal at times, but lucky to get away with a draw in the end with the way things panned out. Ivan Tony was absolutely exceptional on the day. Let's get into these player ratings. Allison gave him a six. Um, hard to know how to judge this. He had a bad day at the office. I mean, his defend the defending in front of him was absolutely shambolic for starters, but he might have been able to play a role in that and solidifying those guys and talking to them more. Um, a couple of times he looked nervous where he went to come for balls and he stopped. Um, normally he's so commanding in the box. Uh, but a bad day at the office and some really, really bad goals that were given away. Um, so, yeah, Allison a six. Trent. Give Trent a five. I think it's a harsh rating, but I had to give him a five because I think he was caught out a number of times. Um, your man Henry had, on that side had the... the the measure of most times and stuff like that. But I think as well, Joel Matup didn't do him any favours either because when your right back is offensive like that and he's attacking all the time, you got to do a better job of coming around and covering for him. But all over, I think he struggled with the physicality of the Brentford strikers. Um, and I think it was a bad day at the office for Trent, so I gave him a five. Five for Joel as well, like we spoke about already. I think his covering needs to be a little bit better. Um, and I just think it was a shaky performance for him, you know. And again, the physicality of those um, Brentford strikers, especially Ivan Tony at times, just, you know, he just didn't seem like he was up for it. Um, Virgil van Dijk is six, probably the best of a bad bunch. Um, you know, at times didn't do a whole lot wrong, but was probably confused and bewildered at what was unfolding in front of him. Um you know, and at time after time, they found themselves cut apart. So a six for Virgil. Andy Robertson got a five. He'd been rested for the two previous games. And there was probably a shout here that maybe Klopp at halftime, knowing that Robbo wasn't in the game at all. He might have had that option of Costas Simicus could have brought him on um, and maybe changed it up a bit. And often it's bewildering like that when you do have options on the bench, on the bench how loyal Klopp is to some of these players at times to a fault. Um, and I thought Robbo... Yesterday was never in the game at all. Um, and I thought there might have been a call there maybe for Costas to come on um, just after halftime, maybe on the 55, 60 minute mark, but didn't happen. So for Fabinho was six. Um, unbelievable pass for Salah's goal. I mean, Fabinho, you know, six might be a little bit harsh, but I mean, he's got to do better at the back post. He's got to know that your man is on his shoulder there for that goal um, and clear the danger. Um, so very disappointing from that point of view he kept Liverpool taking over and at times built a bit of momentum but again by his standards which is normally an eight or a nine and such good work that he normally does that goes unnoticed I thought in the midfield we were poor um, and I just thought it was a bad day at the office where I'm getting a six Jordan Henderson a six um, plays at times um, with a bit of vibrancy um, but at times yesterday just struggled to get into the game and stuff like that you know, wasn't pulling the strings, wasn't geeing up the guys. I thought he could have done more, he could have dug in more, you know. Um, but an absolute great cross for the Olga Jotis goal. Um, but overall, again, poor from the captain on the day. Curtis Jones um, got a seven. I heard a lot of Liverpool fans talking about Curtis that, you know, just do the simple thing. Don't be always trying to impress the gaffer when you get the opportunity and stuff like that. But I kind of like the way Curtis goes about his business. I like that direct offensive way that he plays and stuff like that. What an absolutely exceptional goal. Um, and at the time, I thought, what are we doing taking him off? I mean, when you see the the celebration and all and the beating of the chest and the crest and all, he was well up for the game at that stage there. And I thought it was a bad idea to take him off at that point. I would have sat Bobby down for about five minutes and I would have seen how Curtis progressed in the next five or six minutes. So I thought... Taking them off, I thought that was a mistake, especially after scoring that goal and being so up for it. Um, and you could argue he was probably our man of the match because he was one of the guys who was actually trying most of the offensive stuff. Even though a lot of the stuff yesterday didn't come off, um, at least he was trying it, you know. Um, so, yeah, seven for Curtis and probably man of the match or there or thereabouts. 
Mo Salah, give him a seven, as Mo always does. He crops up and he gets his goal. 100 Premier League goals now um, for Liverpool. Unbelievable achievement. Um, and he's in Liverpool's all-time top 10 now, which is fantastic. Um, but again, wasteful again. Had a chance to put the game to bed. Um, not dissimilar to Diogo Jota as well. He had some chances yesterday as well. I mean, it wouldn't be unusual if both of them had got a hat-trick. Um, but again, wasteful in front of goal when you have to be clinical against these teams. There's no easy away trips in the Premier League. And unless you're on your game, you will get found out. There's no doubt about it. Sadio Mane, here's a player I thought who was very poor yesterday, was never in the game. Gave him a six, probably could have given him a five. You know, just didn't seem to get the grips with the game at all. And I thought he was an absolute candidate at halftime to get subbed out and maybe bring on Origi or bring on Minamino or change it up somehow, you know what I mean? And I think if we have these players on the bench, both players who played exceptionally well midweek in the Carabao Cup as well, so they would have been on a high. So they're sitting there, Sadio ain't doing the business. Pull him off, change it up, bring on Origi, let him get physical at those defenders and stuff like that, you know? Or maybe bring on Minamino, who had a fabulous game midweek. If you're not going to throw these guys in at these times when other guys aren't performing, what are you saying to the squad, really? You know what I mean? If you want them to feel a part of a squad and a part of a team, you've got to give them minutes. Sadio was poor yesterday. Really, really poor by his standards. And um, definitely should have been subbed off, no doubt about it. Um, Diogo Jota. I gave Diogo a seven. Um, you know, he's under pressure there. I mean, obviously, you know, playing in that, that, that nine role, you know what I mean? He has Firmino breathing down his neck and stuff like that. But again, I mean, took his goal really, really well. Um, so glad to see him score. But again, wasteful in front of goal. That goal, that um, shot that comes off the post that falls to him, you've got to put that away. You can't not put that away. And this has been a trend with Diogo now since the start of the season where opportunities that are like sitters are falling to him and he's not putting them away. Um. And you know, he had a disappointing performance against Crystal Palace as well. And I just think I think he needs to step up, you know what I mean? But I was happy to see him get the goal. So look, I gave him a seven. Um Bobby came on for Curtis, a sub that I didn't think should have happened. Came on as a number 10 and almost found himself a dramatic winner, but missed it. Um denied by that block from Jorgensen. But I gave him a six. Um, but to be honest, I don't think the substitution should have happened when it did. I think Curtis after scoring that goal and doing what he did, I think he deserved at least another five minutes. Um, let's move on to Gaffer. Give the Gaffer a six. Um, bad day at the office for him as well. Um, when you can see what's unfolding on the pitch and you have options on the bench, I think you have to put those options in. You have to be brave enough to make those decisions and not just stick with the, the norm, you know. And I thought Robbo was really poor. We could have brought Simicus on. I thought Mane was really poor. We could have brought a Rigi on. Um, and, and I thought we just could have changed things up a little bit to stem the flow. I also thought once we went 3-2 up, I thought he could have brought on another defender, maybe went to a back five. He could have brought Kanate on or Joe Gomez and he could have tightened up at the back and seen the game out. And it was just questionable yesterday, Klopp's in-play naivety when he seen what was unfolding in front of him. Um. And I just think, yeah, I gave him a six and I thought he could have been better on his, his in-game play. But should look, we move on. We got a point. We're top of the league by a point. Should have been three. Um, a tough place to go. I mean, a lot of teams are going to go to Brentford this year and they're going to struggle. We've seen it with Arsenal the first day of the season. It's not an easy place to go with your, your typical Ellen Road, Villa Park, Turf Moor. Tough place to go. Crowd on top of you. And they play really nice football under Thomas Frank. Um, so we might reflect towards the end of the season on this result and you know that was a good point um, but at the moment it feels a bit raw that we should have got three especially in light of the results earlier in the day um, and then a big week coming up away to Porto and then a home to Man City before the break two absolute massive games um, and Klopp has a big task now to pick these boys up will he ring the changes against Porto like he did for AC Milan and then who knows who's going to go into that city uh, that city game. It depends how the Porto games goes and if we pick up any injuries. But this is a massive week coming up now in Liverpool season. So we go again. 
Until next time, this has been your player ratings on the Shanky Sessions. As always, if you want to hit up the show, Dynamo Podcast Network on YouTube, at Session Shankly on Twitter, the upper tier on Facebook and Instagram. And with no doubt, we will be back talking to you again this week. <laughs>